שמעתי בלילה אמיתתי, ישנתי וחלמתי, והנה זה חלומי. בחלומי שמעתי הרבה רעש ברלה. השם רצה לתת מתנה יקרה לבני האדם. ומה המתנה הזאת היקרה? השם מוכן לתת את תורתו הקדושה.
So they're also taking a deep breath that it's over for them also. <laughs> they're very excited. And this week's past Parsha by Yehi had a lot of messages. And one of the things that it has is the Bruch of Ephraim and Menashe, the grandchildren of Yaakov. And Ra'al Salvechik asks the question, why are the Jewish people called B'nai Yisrael? Why aren't they called B'nai Avram? He was the first. Or B'nai Yitzchak? He was the second. I guess B'nai Avram would have been even a bigger question. Why not B'nai Avram? And what's stuck and what continues on in the Torah is B'nai Yisrael, the whole B'nai Yisrael. So anyone in second grade on the stage have an answer. Why are they called B'nai Yisrael? This was not rehearsed. Anything they say right now is only what they thought in the last 10 seconds. Why are they called B'nai Yisrael, not B'nai Avra? Yes? Because uh, Avram's name was Yisrael. No, Avram's name, what? Yaakov's name was Yisrael, yeah? Okay, Yaakov was a great tzaddik, and while Yaakov's fighting with the angel, he changed his name to Yisrael. Good answers, good answers. Russell Vichik didn't give any of those answers. He said, <laughs> he said that Yaakov was the only one of the avot that looked to give a bracha to the grandchildren. Avram gave the bracha to his sons. Yitzhak gave a bracha to his sons. And Yaakov's going to give the bracha to his sons very soon, but who's he go to first? Ephraim and Menashe, grandchildren. So he explained that the Mesorah, the continuation of the Jewish people, you have to look forward into the future and look forward to the people who are going to take that Torah and advance it forward to the next generation. Who are those people? The grandchildren. So that's why it was called B'nai Yisrael, because he had that foresight to look forward. In the audience today, there are parents, grandparents. I don't know if they're great-grandparents, but if there are, Mazal Tov. The last play we had some great-grandparents here. And I'm sure they joined with us here at school, at Yavna Academy, wishing you a bracha, like a Ephraim and Menashe, that it will continue into your generation and to your children and grandchildren generation, the Torah. Also, at the end of Vayachi, not part of the Psukim, not part of the Pasuk, but we say the, these th three words, Chazak, Chazak, Benit, not trained either. Chazak, Chazak, Benit, Chazak, good job. And that means that we should be strong. And strong and go over it again. So after you have a Chumash, and there's a lot of pages, and a lot of prokim, and a lot of psukim. When you get to the last page, we don't say, okay, close it, put it back on the shelf, get the next volume. We say, chazak, chazak, bin chazak. We take it open and start over again. Because a fumash is something that you get when you're in second grade, and you have it, I may until you're 120 years old. The same fumash, you go over and over it again. It's a beautiful thing. So once again, Mazal Tov to 2B.
the aisle. Do a few jump forward and yell leading. Do a few way next.
we have a special treat. No one knows about this. I'm even going to whisper to the microphone. Uh, Laura Schreiber got engaged this year, a few weeks ago. And it must be something on Laura Lightford's classroom. It was about four years ago, five years ago? Three years? Three and seven years. Three and seven okay. years. Have gotten engaged. Three of her assistants in seven years have gotten engaged. So if you need someone who needs a show, <laughs> this is the class we're working. So uh, we have a special visit from the Mossel House for Rosie and Jason, who's our hot time, who's here with us.